Hi guys. Um, it's been some time since the last movie, but I don't really plan on releasing one every month anyway. So, but this time it's gonna be a little longer. I printed up some, printed out some notes. Sorry about the English. And um, we got a few points we need to. Uh, I want to to get out there and, and so you can see how I've been doing with the project. Now the first uh, point of the list is. Uh, the cutting service needs to be damn straight. So I looked around on the internet to see how some woodworkers did it and ensure that the, at the table were straight. And what they do, they kind of build a, a honeycomb grid like this one. And um, then basically you put the table on top of that and that will ensure that it's straight. And I'm gonna add one more of these uh, reinforcements down here. Have to recalculate the number so the distance is the same. Um, but that is basically how I'm going to ensure that this cutting surface is straight. It's really important uh, for the CNC to ensure that this is straight at all times. And this way I don't have to do any redesign or recalibrating of stuff later. I hope, uh, because this one is going to hold it straight. Now, when I started out the design I said I wanted to cut it in a... So it could cut a piece of an A3 size. So what the first thing I did was to add a piece of A3 paper in here, which is the red area. And so I just drew a square the size of an A3 paper, and then I just designed around that. Now the next thing I wanted to have was a fairly high uh, cutting, uh, yeah I don't know what you call that, but I placed the Dremel at the max height I wanted to be able to cut at, and, and then I just had the basic design of just to remove the grid here one sec. So, so this is actually what I kind of started out with um, for this version of the, uh, the design. This is my 1.3 uh, version of the design. And uh, around, from this I simply designed around it. Now, the next requirement I had to it is since I don't have a workshop, I wanted to be able to use it inside my apartment. And before I could do that, I would have to make a, cl a enclosed design so I could leave it running and no, none of the dust would get out of my apartment and my my girlfriend would probably get pretty mad if I messed up her cleaning so I decided to make a box around this uh, not as this is not the way I designed it uh, but this is the pieces I designed so I, here's the box and um, as you can see I got some holes here and that's mainly so I can look inside of the, the design to see how the machine is doing and also it adds some coolness to it. So I'm gonna put some plexiglass over here so you can so it's all the dust will be kept inside and people can still look inside and see what the machine is doing. Um since it's an enclosed design I would need to cut some holes in the back here. I think it's gonna be in the back, I'm not quite sure about that yet. But I wanted to cut a hole for a vacuum cleaner to suck out the dust, so otherwise it could end up getting a fire hazard uh, when it's winding because dust actually can explode. Now, since I started to make the design, I said I wanted a cl enclosed design, and everything has to be inside of this box because that would just make it real prettier. And yeah, well, that is actually basically the, the reason. So all the step motors are gonna be inside of this box, and um, yeah. So so I have to design that when I do it. The next thing I have to think about is uh, the control circuits. I want those to be at the inside as well, so it will keep it pretty. And I'm not quite sure when I want to put them. I'm not gonna put them inside here because of the dust, and I don't want the electronic circuits to be covered in, in dust. So I think I might gonna put them in here from the bottom, make a, a lid and, and put them around here. Since I have the, the stabilizer grid inside of the box, I'm, I'm probably going to put it somewhere here or here or maybe both or somewhere like that. Uh, and then uh, so I can access them from, from the outside here. Uh, maybe I will build a lid so I don't have to, to turn the machine over to access it, but, but that's basically it for electronics. Um, yeah, as I said, I wanted to be able to, to see what I've built and, and I'm going to put some plexiglass over to, to ensure that the, the dust is going to be stay inside. Now, let's see what I did. 
one of the other things I had to think about was how how I'm gonna move the the different x, c, and and y axes around, and I did a Google search on it, and some of the way people do it is by a trimming belt, um, and others do it by a, a threaded rod. Now, the trimming belt. It's a great idea and I like it, but I think it's gonna be too expensive and uh, and a little complicated to build at the start. And so I'm gonna go with a thread rod. And again, there are more types of those, so I'm not gonna go with the typical ones you see in a, a professional D uh, CNC or or some of the more high-end DIY machines. I'm gonna go down to the Home Depot and get a normal threaded rod. Um, the downside of that will be, as far as I think, is the, the speed of it and maybe there will be some more backlash. Um, but I already thought about the backlash and think I can handle it and, and make it so I can fix it fairly cheap. Now, for you who don't know what a backlash is, is it's exactly when you put in the rod into a nut, uh, yeah, the, the bolt into a nut or something, you can pull it back and forward. You can't really see this on the camera because it's so little but you can feel it and, and you need to get rid of that otherwise you won't be able to cut uh, straight uh, or cut a circle or something like that and, and you need to really need to get rid of that. Now I did a Google search on, on how it is and you can see in the this animation I made that um, here's the knot and, and then there's the rod and I can move the knot without moving the rod so that is basically the bad backlash. So you could buy some anti-backlash nuts, but they are really expensive, I think. So I'm just gonna try to make my own. Uh, I'm gonna do the design so I can buy some one day and, and upgrade the system if needed. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just glue one nut down, put in the rod and with another uh, with the rod and then another nut, then pull these two apart glue this one down, not uh, put them too hard apart because you harder you put them apart the more strain you put on the step motors so you won't be able to move it and but but pu pull it apart as, as good as I can with my fingers glue it down make sure it dries at that position and put some oil on there and it should be no backlash at all I hope or very little we will see about that when I build the machine uh, but as I said, I want to make the design so I can buy these backlash nuts, nuts and, and put them on there and, and also upgrade the rods if I think the machine is working too slow. But it isn't a big machine so I don't think the speed is going to be that big an issue. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about uh, is basically, since I live in an apartment I don't have access to a workshop. and. I learned that I need a stable surface to cut it and I can't really do this up in my apartment here because I have a, a cat and, and my girlfriend would probably again freak out if she has to clean up uh, all the dust So and, and the MDF is quite poisonous so I don't want to put my cat into that and um, well so I decided to, to build uh, before I built the CNC I wanted to build a work surface so my idea is to design a portable workbench um, and you can see it here let's just get it up there it is uh, it's not super big uh, it's it's 600 millimeters deep uh, and there's some some space here to, to mount down the pieces but but and some room inside here's a, a door uh, to put in my toolboxes and stuff and I'll put this in my corner of my little man's room and yeah, and then basically I'm gonna put some wheels underneath and I should be able to drive it outside and, and cut the pieces I need and then get it back inside. Also, I designed the service to be approximately the size of the CNC uh, so it can stand on top of it. Now, the, the CNC itself just uh, is actually basically gonna see, let's see, I turn off the glass and um, you can see I put in the slides here yeah, and the rest of it so so this is basically how it's gonna look um, and and you can see the size of it here it's gonna be 800 uh, by 
500 and N32 drives, about 600 high. Um, and also, the red surface is a desired cutting surface, and the white one underneath here is the extra piece that I think I would be able to cut. So I'm gonna get a little bit bigger than I needed, but uh, that doesn't bother me at all. I, I would, would love them, them. It's actually a little bit bigger on the side here as well, but that's not really anything. Probably gonna not notice that anyway, so. But this is basically how my CNC is gonna look. Um, and I don't know when I'm gonna start the building progress. I did some calculation on it and uh, well, it, it's not a cheap project to start with, but when if I start slowly and just build the box and, and then I buy the electronics afterwards, uh, it shouldn't be too expensive to to buy it. So I'm probably not gonna post any more videos this year uh, because Christmas is coming and everybody expects a present. So I have to to use the cash for that, and uh, the project will f get started again after the year. But I'm still gonna use the rest of the year to to finance uh, the the design of this CNC and uh, and hopefully work on some small kinks that I don't see yet. Example with the, the access lid for, for electronics. Um, yeah, well, that's it. And uh, hope you find it useful my explanation, explanation about the anti backlash knot because I didn't really find much about it on the internet. So, oh, yeah, one more thing the design itself, uh, the size of it was actually congregated by. I went down to the Home Depot shop. And looked at the pieces of MDF they could, they, that they had, and one had uh, a worksheet that was two and a half meters by approximately one and a half meters. And again, since I don't work in a, uh, uh, since I don't have a workshop, it's quite big, and I don't really have the place to store such a big piece. So I'm gonna go with a smaller piece that is uh, 1,200 times 800 in size, and that is. Well, I designed the pieces around here, and that is why this is 800 in the width, because then the piece, so I don't have to cut it. Um, yeah, well, that's just what I wanted to say. So, hopefully, some others out there are starting a project as well. I'm hoping to see some videos from you guys soon. So.